Hello, I'm going to talk through how I made some pom-poms to decorate a Regency Spencer today. Firstly, you need to start off with a cardboard template. I've made mine by drawing round a circular washer that is the, well, it's a slightly larger diam diameter than what I want my final pom-pom to be. This gives you a little bit of room for trimming. So draw around a circle that is a little bit larger than you want your final item. And also you need to have a little hole in the middle as well. So that's what the circle, circular size of the washer is really useful for. So if you don't have something that's that one, you need to draw your own little circle on too. And you need double the amount of templates than you do finished pom-poms. So I need four. So I'm drawing eight of these circles on the back of a old cracker packet. Just some cardboard that you can easily cut out with scissors is fine. And now I'm just going to cut them out, as you can see. I am playing around with the speed a little bit of this video, so I hope it isn't either boringly slow or um, nausea-invokingly fast. So we're trying to find the balance. I'm learning all of this. But cut your, cut your templates out with normal, normal paper scissors, sort of carefully, but don't get too, don't get too concerned if they aren't perfectly circular. You then need to cut the little inner circle out as well. I used a hole punch and little snipping and snipping into the circle to do that. I then stick the templates together just with a tiny dab of double-sided sticky tape. So you've got four, four templates all together. Now take the yarn that you're using to make your pom-pom. I'm using a cotton chenille yarn for embroidery here, but if you're just making these for fun or for practice, I recommend a nice thick wool or cotton as it will be much quicker and easier. Take a long length of your thread, probably about double your arm span would be the most you can work with. Fold in half and put it through a large eyed darning needle and then fasten on to the template. Then start wrapping your yarn around the template in a clockwise or anti-clockwise direction, however feels comfortable to you. Just keep working all the way around so that the yarn is evenly distributed and covering the cardboard. Don't worry about when you reach the end of the thread about fastening off. Just leave, just tuck the loose ends through what you've already done and then reel off another long length, re-thread your needle and carry on from there. There doesn't need to be any joins or knots, it all works out in the end just fine. So keep doing this until the um, template is completely covered. You'll find that you also have to keep reopening the hole in the middle of the of the circle to be able to pass your needle through. So I use um, a big awl for making eyelet holes, but a knitting needle or a pencil will do the job just as well. You might have to work up, work up to the pencil, so start with something smaller, if that makes sense. You'll see me doing it in the video in a minute. While this process is quite monotonous, it's not very difficult. The most important thing is just to remember to make sure that your covering of thread is even around the whole circle. Make sure that it's not all focused in one place. Um, that's an advantage if you're doing these in more than one colour. You can see where you've been, whereas obviously because I'm working in just the blue, I'm just building up the same colour over it. Um, so it's a bit hard to tell where you've been, which is why I also keep 
in a sort of clockwise or anti-clockwise direction to try and keep the coverage even. So this is what I mean by using an awl to reopen up the hole in the in the circle. Just push it through so you can continue to thread your needle through the gap. So now you can see, hopefully, that the circle's getting quite three-dimensional and puffy. Um, which is when you've, which is how it should look when you've got as much thread as, you're pos as you can possibly wrap around it to make the pom-pom. So when you really can't fit any more on, um, it's time to stop. And um, because I'm making four of them, I need to get them all to an identical size and shape. So once you've got the first one there, you can then see roughly how your other ones need to, how heavy and thick your other ones need to be. Now it's time to cut through the threads from the outside edge of the circle with a pair of scissors, making sure you get the blades between the two layers of the cardboard. This means you can cut around the outside edge all the way around evenly. And actually, where I had double-sided sticky taped the two pieces of card together, this wasn't very helpful, and I ended up having to sort of tear and cut my way through that. So if you could just keep the two circles together without sticking them, you'll find it much easier. Um, and as you can see here, I'm using my fingers to pull apart the cardboard to make sure I cut through all of the, all of the loops of yarn. Now that you've got your two pieces of cardboard separated in half, take a strong thread, I'm using a top stitch thread here in a similar colour, and wrap it between the two pieces of cardboard a few times, keeping it nice and tight. Um, it's, and then tie a very secure knot in it. This is really important because otherwise when you take the cardboard away, you would just have lots of little lengths of wool. So the thread wrapped around and tied off is what holds it all in place. Now you can cut and pull away the remaining cardboard, um, that's not needed anymore, and discard it. And your pom-pom is ready, well, your pom-pom is made, now you need to sort of fluff and shape the, the threads, um, as you can see I'm doing here. And yeah, that's it, and then you just need to repeat with the other three. For the Spencer I'm decorating, I need two slightly small pom-poms for the lapels and two slightly larger pom-poms for the tails. So although mine were all in theory the same size, I'm actually now going to trim them down with a pair of scissors to the desired size and shape that I want. And this also helps fluff out the yarn and make it look a little bit more fuzzy, um, fuzzy and soft rather than sort of stranded and clumped together, if that makes sense. And now you can see my completed pairs of pom-poms, which I'm very pleased with. So these are the two smaller ones, and these are the two sl slightly larger ones. And here's the debris from cutting them down. I'm now going to sew them in place on the spencer using um, a double strand of the thick top stitching thread again. So you can see I've just fastened on through the middle of the pom-pom, keeping it nice and secure. Um, yeah, and then I'm just going to sew them in place um, onto the lapels, first of all. I do a terrible hash of this. I don't quite know what I was thinking. Maybe it's because it's the first time I've really filmed myself sewing, but I don't do a very good job. But um, they are very, very well securely sewn on, which was what I wanted. You know, I don't want, the, I don't want them to sort of drop loose or one to hang down a bit lower than the other or anything silly like that. And I also sew through the whole pom-pom itself a few times to make sure it really is nice and secure and tight and then fasten off the thread securely on the, on the inside of the lapel. I then couldn't resist just giving them an extra little trim to make sure there were no 
um, bits of thread sticking up higher or looking uneven. This is something you could carry on doing forever, so don't do that. It's a bit like cutting your own fringe, you have to know when to stop eventually. So I've lost the best part of today's light, but I just thought I'd show you the finished Spencer as it wasn't coming over very well while I was sewing the pom-poms on. It's got a crossover front and then it's got a triangular lapel either side with a pom-pom on the end. It has a nice little gathered sleeve detail where the dress, the dress sleeve can show through. And then at the sides in the back it's got two tails and a little peplum mm. back. So that's all one piece and the other the other tails here and each of those tails has got the pom-pom on the end as well we um looked at quite a few fashion, fashion plates me and the uh, owner of the spencer in the design of it and we found them with all sorts of tails that usually in, uh, obviously in pairs so between two four six and even eight and they always had a pom-pom or a tassel on the end so we've gone for quite a modest style really um yeah, so I hope you like it. I'm sorry that the light's not very good. So this Spencer's now complete. It can head off to its owner. It's already been with her and been on a nice little European adventure, but we didn't have the pom-poms on it then because of the deadline. So now it's complete and I don't think it will get an outing this year, but you know, who knows, maybe next year.